Hey guys, all right, well, we're starting <clears throat> to build our lathe stand today. I picked up some three inch uh, casters. I picked up some three inch casters and uh, I've got my lumber pre-cut here. Uh, basically, this is our lay stand. Uh, it's 48 inches wide, uh, 25 inches tall, plus uh, 5 inches for the uh, casters, the total height of the caster. So the total height of the stand uh, will be 30 inches. Uh, this will vary. This Yours may vary. You can adjust the uh, this dimension here however you see fit. Uh, it's going to be 25 inches wide uh, or deep and should work out great. I'm going to put some 2x6's here and then underneath and then I'm going to double layer uh, some 3 quarter inch plywood here and here. Alright, so that's the drawing and basically how I've got the legs worked out. I got four pieces 48 inches four pieces 18 inches, four pieces 22 inches, four pieces 21 inches, and these are two by sixes. I've got four pieces 21 inches for those also. Uh, these are our legs, and they're basically gonna be like this, so that we get a basically a four by four, and those will be screwed together. And then we'll have the 2x6 uh, underneath, like so. But let me get, see if I can get one laid out and then we'll, uh, we'll put it together. Screw it. Then my two by sixes will go inside like so. And of course the casters will be up underneath mounted to the two by sixes. And I'll have my leg like so. And then I'll just build another frame just like that, sit on top. And the two by sixes on the top frame will be an inch and a half below the top of the two by four. So I've got that laid out. Let me go ahead and I'll get it all put together and then we'll come back in a second.
basic bottom frame. Put our two by sixes in. And we'll get those screwed in place. Okay, finishing up the last two, last few screws on the bottom. Okay, this is the bottom frame. The casters will sit right here. Uh, they'll go like so, and then we have the legs that will go like this. But before we get the legs on, let's go ahead and I'll, I'm going to do the same process, repeat the same process, and build the top frame. Okay, so I've got the top and the bottom frame put together and I need to make a correction on the legs. Uh, it's 21 and a quarter instead of 22 inches. So make that correction. Uh, basically we're going to go just like so. Gonna go up against the two by six here and here, and then a filler, 18 inch filler piece in between. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these together and then screw that in, and we'll pretty much have the frame built. Okay, so I got the basic frame together, and now I just need to put the 18 inch pieces. I just need to put the 18 inch pieces right here. Like so. Just to give it a little bit more meat. And that'll be it. There's four of those pieces. I'm going to install those now. Okay, so we've got it all assembled. So now I just have to screw down the casters. Uh, I wanted to try to get some locking casters down here on the end. Uh, but they didn't have any at the time, so I'm just going to have to deal with uh, casters that don't lock. But we've got it fully assembled now, and we just want to put, I'm just going to put the casters on, and then uh, that'll be that. Alright, so I'll finish screwing these on. And then we'll be ready to put in the top. Okay, well I've made quite a bit of progress as you can see. I just cut these two pieces of plywood. This is just some scrap plywood that it came actually came from a crate. Uh, but I got my two by sixes in here and then I cut this. Now the edge of this is going to come right to the edge of the uh, bedway on the lathe. This is the tail end. And this is the head end. I added this piece of um, 2x4 right here because actually the bolt hole for the lathe is going to be about right there. Uh, it's nine and a, about nine and a quarter inches. And over here it's about three and three quarter inches. So again, I cut just a piece of scrap plywood that came, actually came from a crate. And then you can see. I'm going to glue and screw that down. I'm not going to use this bed, uh, but it does have the bolt holes here. Uh, so those will come in handy when I get ready to bolt the uh, lathe down. But as you can see, I have a bolt hole right here, which is right in the center of that two by four that I put in. And then a bolt hole right here, which will go through that two by six. Uh, next, we will um, do the 
the bed, this center part right here, and this will be where we collect all of our uh, coolant, and it'll run down into a drain. Uh, for a coolant pump. Don't know if you can tell on this drawing, but you can kind of see how I've got it laid out right here. Uh, so this will drain down. Actually, this plywood comes across here, so this will just drop down to about right here, and then over here will drop down. Or actually, I may just have it run down to here, and all of these drop down to here. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, sometimes what's on paper and what turns out in reality is not always the same, but uh, there we are so far. And uh, I'll get working on the, uh, I'm going to use the pieces of the crate that came with the lathe. I'm going to use the pieces, the sides of the crate to make my uh, center portion here. And then we'll fiberglass it. All right. So that's next. Hey guys. Well, this morning we're going to try to finish up our stand here as you can see yesterday i put these two additional plywood pieces on but today we're going to try to do uh we're going to put a drain here and then we'll put some plywood pieces here to kind of drain uh the coolant down towards the drain to try to make it flow this way uh as you can see i modified this is where the uh this is where the lathe was going to bolt right here and right here and I just went ahead and modified it and just put a piece all the way across uh, the dimension right here changed as well this dimension right here from the edge of the 2x4 is 6 inches I hope you can see that probably not, okay that's 6 inches and this dimension is 11 inches So the dimension from the edge to here is 11 inches and from here to here is 6 inches and it goes all the way across which is 21 inches. Twenty one inches. Alright, so what we're going to do, the idea is just to use the uh, pieces of the crate here. We're going to just take and use the pieces of the crate to make this bottom here and then we'll fiberglass it but you can kind of see the umbrella there beside the martini glass or wine glass uh, that's what i'm going to use so i figured that was a great use of that material i'm also going to use it for the sides of the uh, stand and if there's enough i'll use it for the back as well um doesn't think i don't think it's strong enough for the bottom but um I'll use I've got some other scrap plywood around I'll use for the bottom all right so uh, I'm gonna get started and kind of figure out these pieces uh, this piece I'll probably move this line over to here and then have everything and move the drain section over to here and then have everything drained down to this corner I think that'll be a lot bit easier all right so let me get all this figured out and we'll get uh, some pieces cut so ultimately our goal is to have, uh, when we get done, our stand and enclosure looks something like this. So, at any rate, let's get busy. Okay, so I've got the back off. And after I got all the nails and stuff out, it's 
pretty good usable piece of plywood. As you can see, it's bowed a little bit. Uh, but that'll be great. That'll be fine. Uh, I had these pieces on here to uh, keep it stiff. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to use these to help brace up the bottom. So that'll work out good. And remember, you paid for this, so you might as well use it, right? <laughs> so let me get started. Okay, so here's the drain. Uh, I found this really cool looking, uh, it's a bar sink drain, and it comes with this uh, cool strainer that, uh, and it's, you can see how deep it is, but it comes with this cool strainer that pops down in there. And uh, I think that's going to keep a lot of the stuff from getting down in the coolant. It was like 12 bucks, kind of expensive. I was really looking for like a, a bathroom sink drain, but they were about eight bucks. I figured for the four bucks extra, I could get a nice, uh, this uh, nice deep with the basket in here. But our dimensions, what I'm gonna do is I'm cutting a circle and I'm gonna recess this lip down about a quarter inch. And then the inside's going to go through this hole here, like so. And then when I fiberglass that, I know a quarter inch is kind of deep, but when I fiberglass it, it will, um, it will raise up a little bit. So I've just got a scrap piece of three-quarter inch plywood, and I screwed a piece of two-by-four on here just to uh, clamp it so I can clamp it uh, in my vise. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my CNC mill to mill this out. So let's get that going. Okay, so I wrote the code real quick just to bore this out. I've got a, I've got it spaced up a little bit so it doesn't, when it goes through the wood, will be okay. And I've just got it clamped in my vise. I've got this hose ran over to a vacuum so it's going to be loud. And I'm going to hopefully, this will be the first time I've actually milled any wood. So we'll see how it goes. Well, let's check it. Okay, I think that's going to give me plenty enough room right there. And uh, I believe that'll drop down in there. Get that out of the way. Did a good job. I get, that was 15 inches per minute. I think I probably could have got, what have I, could have went probably around 30, but. Uh, <clears throat> I've got about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around so that when I roll the fiberglass down through there, it will, uh, it will work nicely. All right. That's done. Okay, so the first step is to install the three inch piece. I've cut it to 21 inches in length.
cut it to 21 inches in length and I'm just going to install it right up against the plywood and this is going to be the side of our pan and of course I want to glue it. Uh, I'm a former woodworker. I'm an avid woodworker as well. I kind of do a little bit of everything and uh, I glue everything. So I'll just put a little bead of glue on the top here, like so. Then we'll put this in place. And these are uh, just some three-quarter inch brats, watch for splinter. side. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so I've got the other piece in, the other side piece. And next I want to put the drain in. Now as you can see, I've added this rabbit to the drain and that's so that when I put my angled piece on there, it'll have a ledge to sit on coming from both sides. So now I'm going to install that. Let's see if you can get you a better view here. Okay. So this is just going to get installed like so. And then our pieces that come in will lay like this and then come in at an angle like this. So I'm just going to glue it and I'm going to nail through the three inch piece here and I'll probably put a screw through the front just to hold it right here. I'm also going to glue it. Piece is going to be this four inch piece that goes like so. I've got to cut it to length. And what I want to do is, and because it has a bow in it, I want to try to flatten it out. I'm going to put this piece that came from the pallet to give it straighten it out. I'm going to put this in at an angle, and it'll give me something to nail to. I want to drop this down from the edge of the from the top of the uh, stand about a quarter inch. All right, so let me get that finish getting this secure and I'll get that in place. Okay, so I've got the cleat in and I've got this piece cut. It's 15 and a half inches by four inches. And before I nail this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get all the other pieces cut. I'll be putting the cleat on this side as well, a cleat in the front and a cleat in the back. And what I did was I just took, for the front and the back, I just took and just ripped a couple of inch and a half pieces and I'll just nail them to the front uh, and to the back like so to get our uh, nailing board. All right, so let me get that installed and then I'll turn the video back on. I'm trying to conserve as much battery as possible and still get all the information I can into the video. So bear with me. Okay, well I finally got all the pieces cut. I tried to keep uh, this intact, but unfortunately I dropped it, so uh, it's two pieces now. I'm going, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and secure the edges so I can get this down where I have support to nail it. And then the place right here, I'll just put a little um, a strip up underneath to keep it straight. But these two will be straight all the way down to here. This will be straight across the back. This is straight coming down here. And then in the middle, it'll just bend like so. Because this piece is tapered down towards here. Uh, and so in the middle, it'll be a crease that'll run down to the drain. Now, as you can see, this is a lot deeper in the front edge. Uh, it tapers down towards the drain, but it starts out three quarter inches below 
this right here. I had a, I dropped this down three eighths of an inch, and this is um, an inch and an eighth deeper in the front. So everything will run towards the front and then down towards the drain. So what I'm gonna do now is get everything secured and we'll have this pan in. And all of these pieces were cut just from the back of the crate. So I still have the front and the two sides. And I'm gonna to try to use that for the back of the stand and maybe the sides if there's enough. We'll see. So let me get that all glued down and secured. Okay, so I got the bottom tray finished up and uh, a little more difficult because of the bow in the plywood, but I put the supports underneath it and uh, I was able to get it to come down a good bit. So I think it'll be okay. Once we get it fiberglassed, uh, it'll be fine anyways. Uh, that's the back, looking at the back. Uh, over to your left is the head end and to your right is the tail end where the drain is. And you can see I've got the back level and then the tail end just sl slants directly down towards the drain. It's uh, about a two and three quarter inch drop down to the drain. And then now we're facing, we're, we're in the back facing the front and to the left is the tail end and it slants, as you can see it slants. Now it is um, an inch and a quarter on the right side, it's down an inch and a quarter and it slants down to two and three quarters. And then looking at the tail end side, it goes from the, from the back, which is a quarter inch below the top, and then it goes down to an inch below. So you can kind of see how it's going to slant everything down towards the drain, hopefully. So now I'm just going to uh, put some silicone caulk on all the edges and seams and then I'm going to fiberglass. That'll be the next step. Hey guys, <clears throat> as you can see, I've silicone caulked the uh, entire, all the seams, and I use silicone caulk. You can use latex caulk, I don't think it really matters. Um, just an added bonus protection. Uh, we're going to be using fiberglass resin. I think a quart's going to be enough. Uh, I picked this up at uh, local home center. You can get it just about anywhere, auto parts store. Uh, I'm going to be using fiberglass cloth. Now this says that it contains uh, eight square feet. I wasn't really sure what I'd need, so I went ahead and got two bags. Uh, the fiberglass resin does come with hardener, but it's always a good idea, in my experience, to pick up uh, an extra bottle. Uh, some scissors to cut the fiberglass cloth. A paintbrush to kind of put the resin down and I'm going to use some solo cups to mix the resin. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to kind of cut my cloth and get it laid out in here and then uh, we'll mix up some resin. So let me get that cut up and then I'll turn the video back on. Okay so I've got my cloth laid out and I cut out the hole and trim this corner up so it wasn't bunched up. The rest of the corners I think will be okay. I left it a little long here. I'm probably gonna fiberglass out to this just to get this and then I may fiberglass this and trim it. Probably fiberglass this ledge right here and trim it. Um, this is 32 ounces and I'm just gonna use a solo cup. I think this is probably a 12 ounce solo cup so I'm gonna mix probably about six ounces or so. Uh, one thing else, another thing I wanted to uh, mention was wear some gloves. 
And you might want to pick up a, a scraper. It helps smooth this out. Now the directions say that one bottle should be used for the whole can. So I'm going to use about a third of this bottle probably. That should be enough. If you mix too much, it's going to just harden up real quick. And if you don't have enough, it's just going to take longer to harden. So that's my experience. So we're just going to have to move real quick here. And uh, use our brush. I'm just going to pour. You want this to saturate the cloth. Tuck it into the edges. And it'll kind of level itself out because this is a flat surface. You can tell when you got it saturated because it, it'll you'll see what's underneath. Make sure you put the newspaper down underneath this because you may you don't want this stuff on your garage floor believe me. Now you could instead of doing fiberglass I've seen people do truck bed liner and stuff like that and that'll probably work. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work uh, but I just felt like with the expansion and contraction of the plywood um, may develop a crack and I just don't want to have to deal with it later so I'm pretty sure that the fire glass is going to do a great job I'm not going to worry about if this is smooth, just try to get it as smooth as you can. Uh, I'm not going to sand it or anything. It's not really that critical. It's just a drain pan. Alright, so we're going to mix up some more and uh, we'll finish it off. Okay, now we got the top all fiberglassed in. Uh, it's not perfectly smooth, 
I was going to try to cut some of that out, but I think I'll just leave it. Uh, I think there's enough recess in there for this to sit down, and I'll caulk it with some silicone caulk. And that drain will pop right in there. Overall, I think it turned out good. It's not, like I said, it's not perfectly smooth. Can't really see it in the video, but maybe there you go. You can see it's not perfectly smooth, but for what we're going to use it for, uh, I think it'll be just fine. It's already, I mean, this part, this is the first part of, you saw me do. Uh, it's already dry, and uh, the rest of it will dry up fairly quickly. Uh, I think it's kind of neat with this stuff showing through there. I may not, uh, may not paint it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so next I'll try to, I still, as you can see, I still have both sides, the front and the top over here. And so... Those will become the back and the two sides for sure. And then I'll probably leave the front open because I'm going to have my uh, little bucket over there. It's going to just have like a tube going down from the drain straight into the bucket for the coolant. So... Uh, I think it turned out well. I don't think we'll have any problems with leaks. And uh, it should work really well. Uh, I did drill the holes for mounting the lathe. And they're 10 inches. My holes, I put them 10 inches from the back. And it's just a half inch hole. And when you're uncrating your lathe, save these bolts right here. Because they're, they're long enough, I believe, they're going to be long enough for us to mount our lathe to our workbench. And there's one on each end, and I think there's four total. So save those bolts. Then you don't have to buy any. And you can use those to mount your lathe. But I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, this is part three. And uh, I'll do a probably a brief review in, in part four after I get the, the stand finished and then we're going to start working on the uh, getting the lathe mounted and start working on the electronics enclosure. Alright, thanks for watching.